Give me the argument, the best argument you know, for the power of cinema. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? And welcome, everybody, to the show. It's Películas with the Bros. My name is Adrian. My name is Ivan. And this is Películas with the Bros, a show, a podcast where me and my brother Ivan talk about movies. Each week, we do a different movie. Ivan, what's the movie of the week? Worst person in the world? Yes. Today, we are taking a trip to the Nordic lands to realize that humans have the same emotions, feelings, goals, and problems as they age. No matter if you're two of the whitest Mexicans like us in San Diego or you're a white female living in Oslo, Norway. But before we get into the movie, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Um, if you like podcast shows that talk about movies and you want to learn more about movies and you want to learn about what we think about movies, which I don't know why you would, but. Maybe you do. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. You, uh, Películas with the Bros. We would be there. We, we've covered a bunch of movies. We've been doing this for uh, like five years now, but we really honed in and uh, found our, our niche lately. So if you like uh, to hear our opinions about movies, Películas with the Bros on YouTube. Also, we're a podcast, so you can find us on all podcast platforms, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. Teaser classic. Um, look us up, but because with the bros, subscribe to us. Uh, mm. And if you want, you can hit the like button on YouTube. That will help the algorithms. And you can also leave a comment that will uh, help the algorithms. And we talk back. So anything you say, we're gonna respond to you. We've actually already had a couple of haters, right, Evan? <sighs> I've dealt with them, and uh, they're not. They're no longer part of this world, but obliterated is yeah. the word i'd use what like what weapon in filmography history would we use on them infinity gauntlet <laughs> <laughs> just snap yeah okay that's a good one um maybe like some like the rail gun from transformers 2 do you remember that it's fired from a boat to the pyramid yeah that just okay like <laughs> what about um like the uh what is it the star star wars thing was it the that that star no 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 the oh. that star i mean that would kill every that would kill us too wouldn't it yeah unless would. we could angle it so it just like nips them off the edge of the earth you know oh <laughs> we are good nippers it's like a death star trick shot hey that's titillating <laughs> anyways uh yeah if you like what you just heard that banter between two guys that uh say that they love each other because they're brothers but um that was yeah. scripted too yeah it was scripted uh subscribe to us and that is all back to the show ivan <laughs> the worst person in the world that's me some might say the premise of the movie julie is a woman trying to find her path in life she tries multiple academic fields in pursuit of what will be her career path she tries multiple men in pursuit of a partner in life the pursuit of a career and a partner lead her down multiple paths, but none seem like she's ever going in the right direction. But along the way, she might find what she is truly seeking, and that is herself. <laughs> With the cast of, oh man, I, I, I tried to learn their names and how to say it with the correct Norwegian uh, tilt, but I, I think I forgot. Mm -hmm. With the cast of Renat... Renz, Renz V as Julie, Anders Danielson Lee as Axel, and Herbert Nordrum as Even. Is that his name? Even? Probably not. Uh, we have this movie, The Worst Person in the World. Uh, world. It is written, written and directed by Joachim Treya. One and only. I know I said that correctly because I listened to an interview where they said his name. And then I just spelled it how it's actually spelled. Phonetically. So I did yo, like yo. And I put Akeem, like a black guy or a Muslim guy. And then I put Trey, like a Trey. And I put uh. So yo, Akeem Trey. Ivan, he's made a couple movies. Probably you haven't seen him, right? Come on. So he's, like I said, this movie's uh set in 
Norway, and he is a Norwegian director. He's made movies called Reprise in 2006, Oslo, August 31st, 2011, uh, Louder Than Bombs came out in 2015, Thelma in 2017, and this movie, uh, four years later, after Thelma, The Worst Person in the World. He is Norwegian. I don't know much about him. I'm not going to sit here and wax poetic about someone I don't know, but just looking at his films they look like they're character studies sort of what this film is um slice of life slice of life and all his movies are very critically praised like they're all yep they're great movies but it doesn't seem like he's maybe after this one he might go in the direction of um like a true american film and see if he can uh make a big year i think thelma and Louder Than Bombs were like French films with uh, American actors, but mm-hmm. we'll see. We'll see what his future entails. I tried to do like a rap equivalent, um, but I got lazy and I just put Kendrick. I know. So I started thinking about producers and I was like, Alchemist? This director? Yeah. Well, I, what's his, is the subjects always like character? Yeah. <sighs> Kanye. Nice. <laughs> uh, Ivan, where did you watch this film? AMC. UTC. Oh, <laughs> you dirty dog. That's only a theater that played it in America. <laughs> <laughs> AMC UTC. Well, we had a revelation, Ivan, didn't we? I looked up. Oh, go ahead. We had a revelation that the arc light that was once existed existing <laughs> at the utc mall was no longer and instead it was bought out by amc nice i actually read this like on like hollywoodreporter.com for some reason uh-huh. i was like oh that's interesting it'll happen soon and then i look and they're already open and bussing i i looked up like amc utc to see like just to see what it said and uh-huh. it said like three days ago in the news like AMC UTC just opened. Yeah. It's like, what the? This is fresh. Yeah. When I got there, I was like, uh, I was like, you guys are planning on renovating stuff? Like, yeah. Uh, we just had to set up and get everything ready, but then they're going to come like this coming month to start adding some things. And I was like, how long have you been open? Oh, like four days. I was like, oh, wow. It looks like a little convention setup. Yeah. yeah like everything's tenser. Yeah. Just temporary. The workers were hilarious, actually. Like, they you uh, you could tell that was their first job ever. Uh-huh. The girl that took our ticket, she took my ticket first. Uh-huh. I went with uh, my fiance. I mean, my wife. I t- she took my ticket, and she's like, "All right, theater eleven, go down the hall and to the left." Uh, and then she took her ticket, and she's like, "Theater eleven too, go down the hall and to the left." I'm like, obviously, <laughs> it's the same she's theater. Really watching this, crying. Oh man. Shout out to you, girl. This is for you, all right? <laughs> don't, don't let go. Don't, don't let go of your, your dreams. Keep ripping those tickets. Wow. <sighs> what do you think about that theater? Um, What's the potential? I don't know. I hope they they really spruce it up. I want it to be as good looking as UTC itself. Yeah. And if it does look that good, ooh. That's that's gonna be a butte. Yeah, yeah, because UTC is coming up right now. Yeah. Um. It's funny because you mentioned that this is the only theater in San Diego that was <coughs> showing this movie, right? Yeah. I wonder, and I know the other uh, La Jolla uh, AMC, the one that we hate, they show sort of indie films too, more mm-hmm. so than the other ones. They should like find a niche like that. It doesn't have to be indie, but it'd be cool to be like, we're UTC, AMC, and we do this. I mean, it has a lot of theaters. I mean, screens. Yeah. They're smaller though, right? Yeah. But they're like stacked, like the chairs. Yes. Like, instead of like like this, it's like ding, ding, ding. Yes. Which is nicer. Uh-huh. You feel like you're on top of the pr- the road below you. Yeah. You could just put your feet right in their freaking face. Yeah, in their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you take off your toe, give them that toe jam. Yeah, eat that. 
<laughs> Eat that. <laughs> um, Let's move on. Because the the what is it the uh, Regal mm. and is that is that a Mir Mesa? Yeah. So stupid. Uh, the Regal has the faces. Do they still have the faces of all the famous uh, actors and actresses? That's a cool little thing, you know? It's kind of dated now. Super and he's dated. like Adam Driver, Tom Holland, <laughs> Couples and Dias, <laughs> just <laughs> st- thrown like Where's Waldo kind of thing. Yeah. But it's, I mean, they're all still Hollywood A listers, but. Well, they have like Morgan Freeman there. Yeah. Like maybe he shouldn't be there. It's just all dated. Yeah. Like it was, I remember when I first saw the theater, I was like, this is awesome. Cause it feels like, like almost like a museum. Yes. Like when I first, first saw it. Yep. That when, when I went back like a month or so ago, it felt like old. You know where I want to go? Uh, in Austin, they have, uh, I forgot what it's called, but it's, um, Alamo. Yeah. The Alamo draft house. That place sounds cool. I mean, that's, I feel like it's, what's their thing? They're like, we're family? Uh, I think it's like they show all kinds of movies. I mean, I think, I think <laughs> <laughs> that could be like just the norm with this new theater um, at post, post-COVID norm. Yeah. Because really, that. people want to see just Spider Man, Transformers Eight, everything else. Like, who cares? Well, I don't know why they don't like open early, mm-hmm. eight a.m., nine a.m., and from like eight a.m. to three p.m. show like classic movies. Like, why don't you just pop in Spider Man, Tobey Maguire, uh, Kill Bill? Like movies that are just because they do that. At, I think that's what Alamo Draft House is sort of cool because they do that kind of thing. And then they also have that at uh, I think it's called the Beverly. It's the one that Quentin Tarantino runs and owns. And that one's cool because he's he actually he, him and a team make like the list of all the movies they're gonna show throughout the month. Mm-hmm. Like it's curated. That's beautiful. I've been meaning to go to that one, but I haven't had the time. But that would be cool. And I don't, I don't know. Maybe there's some money thing that's hindering AMC to do that. Maybe. But that'd be cool if there's different AMCs. You go to a different AMC for a different experience. I want to travel. Right, but then you're like, I like my AMC because they have, they serve like uh, I don't wanna, artisan I'm cocktails. Tired, but it's like I don't want some elitist sort of like, ooh, mine's better. Like I, w- I want like a universal everything. Where nah, I don't want any gatekeeping, Adrian. Well, okay. How about not so much elitist, but at least like uniqueness. I would go for like, like this one smells like. Nah, shut up. <laughs> like a mural on this one. That one it had like an an art installation, ten foot tall, Tom Holland. Yes. Whatever. Yes. That one. The third one has, I don't know, live performance. Or, I don't know. Something like that I'm okay with. But not like, oh, this one shows Ghostbusters exclusively. Ah, man. That's where you and I differ. How many people in your theater? Me. Nice. Creepy? What? Do you <laughs> I just had like this image of like, you're the only one in the theater. And then like 30 minutes in. Some guy walks in and he just like looks, he looks at the movie, then he looks at you and he walks out. I would think that's a worker. But it's a guy like eating popcorn. He's like, it's like, uh, he's taking like a little sample platter of like movies. I walks in, ooh, Spider Man. This is good. Yeah. Let me see what's on the other one. And yeah. Just keeps but going. he comes and he, he sees it and he's like, all right. All right. And he looks at you and he's like, weirdo. <laughs> and he walks away like why would he be the isn't it sort of weird that you're the only one there and he walks in and I like i didn't see anyone like when i walked in and when i left i only saw that's workers. the weird yeah. i felt regal <laughs> <laughs> shout out to regal <laughs> yeah there's i didn't see anyone until i walked in there's only five people total 
so three other people with us um what'd you think about the movie i liked it it's not my usual cup of tea but i i mean i liked the character aspect of it but i think i just like movies when they're like fun like a fun two hours Mm -hmm. like i would want to see this as a tv show more Mm -hmm. and then like a video game i want to have fun too but with a little cool little story, I don't know. It just I'm. It's like tailored. Yeah, you were saying that last time. Where like action movies or action is tailored specifically for movies for you. Yeah. And then you you don't really like action movie action sequences in TV because it doesn't translate well. I think that's like the reverse argument here, right? Where like you liked it, but it's be- you think it's better suited for your taste in a TV format. Yeah. Yeah, because there isn't too much. You don't need <sighs> the big screen to, to show this at all. Yeah, my rebuttal against that is, I wouldn't like to. I wouldn't be as intrigued if this was a, a show. Because like. That's the thing about movies, right? That you're you're in an experience. You're forced. You paid the twelve bucks. Yep, you paid the twelve bucks. You're in a theater. You're everything is focused on what's in front of you, or at least it should be, and the phone is poo pooed on, right? Right. So, and then this is something uh, a more a quieter film, something that takes its time, and when it's that way, I think. In that sense, it's actually better suited for movies where you're you're forced to hone in and pay attention for these two hours rather than passively watching it throughout six a six hour experience or a, if it was thirty minute episodes like a two hour experience on TV. <laughs> oh damn it. <laughs> I got that wrong guys. I'm convinced. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's actually a thought I was thinking while watching the movie. I'm like I really like this movie, but I don't know if I would like it as much at home because it's 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 something that I really need to pay attention to 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 get engaged with. I think either way, I wouldn't have watched it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, I just I don't I didn't see anything cinematic about this movie, and I could see like a slow whatever movie on the big screen, but. I would need to see some like reason for it to be like, right? Where like this, I mean, this could have been a book. Yeah, it could be a podcast. Well, I, I disagree with the idea that this there wasn't anything cinematic. What's the most cinematic scene you remember? Um. The one that's popping out is actually the scene where she's tripping. I guess. Yeah. Um, but there isn't many like, w- oh, yeah, there is one shot that I thought was beautiful, which is like her looking out into uh, the city mm-hmm. while she's walking and like sort of confused. I thought that was beautiful. But yeah, there's less cinematic here than in a movie like Dune, right? Yeah. It's a good argument, but I, I think I just go back to like, and it, it's to your point too, like either way you probably wouldn't watch this, but for me, since I wanted to watch it, I think the best format is in theaters. Mm. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't go through again. I thought I was, I thought I was going to make it. One more try. <laughs> um, it's funny because when I went and sat down, I was convinced I was watching a movie that was going to be in English. Part like a little bit in, like I forgot it was in, in English. Uh huh. And I was just like watching it and reading it, but it didn't like feel like I was reading it. Right. It just uh, sort of, I was like, oh, damn, I thought this was English. I guess not. Uh-huh. And I even brought up a point. This is our first foreign film. There's a, actually a lot of, uh, did you watch the trailers for this like beforehand? You timed it perfectly where it started. 
No. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I actually didn't watch trailers. So you, you timed it perfectly, so you walked in and it started? Saw Nicole Kidman. Good old Nicole. Every time I see her, I'm like, I literally tell Tanya, if she comes out, I'm going to get so mad. Every time she comes out and I do the same reaction, you know what I do? <sighs> That's all I can do because there's nothing else. But come on, man. Like, can you, can they stop showing her? <sighs> I don't know. It's like the execs. It's like, ooh, we got Nicole Kidman. This is going to last 80 years. Like, go to a theater for once in your life and see what it's like to watch her every week. You're going to be sick of her after the first week. And it's not interesting. It should be like Adam Driver or Zendaya. Adam Driver and Zendaya in the next film. It's no, like it should be something where Zendaya, oh, sorry, Zendaya. Well, yeah, Zendaya, but it should be something where Kidman's like acting out her career. I want it to be funny. Yeah, that would I help. I want it to be like slow pan the theater entrance. The camera goes in, goes to the the seats, pans, and you see Nicole Kidman in like her whatever clothes, uh -huh. like she got out of bed. Yeah, popcorn. She's just eating them. Looks at the camera for a second, looks back, cuts, and it's the movie now. Is that funny, or is yes. that just different? It's funny. Oh, <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> it's funny. How about all that what you said, <coughs> but it goes into the theaters. And she's sitting in the back. She's eating popcorn. And in comes Tom Cruise. And he says, excuse me, is anyone sitting right there? And she says, actually, no. And he sits down right next to her and he says, I really, I'm really sad about how our relationship went. And then, <laughs> and then she says, me too. And then he says, but you know what? She says, what? He says, fuck you. <gasps> In like kids movies too? Yeah. Okay. Cut. Oh my God. And then Kubrick comes out. Great guys. Good job. And then we realize Kubrick never passed away. Uh -huh. He's alive the whole time. Wow. And he directed that AMC. Yeah. Short film. Yeah. And that's his masterpiece. Okay. <laughs> 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 all right um yeah i like the movie um i like the how it was presented like the 12 chapters i like uh the elements of magic realism like some stuff was sort of uh her imagination um like the light turning off the light and her going back or like stopping oh. time. That's like magical realism. Okay. Uh, the tripping scene, like things that are technically not possible and using film to explore those. Right. In a movie that you would think is just dramatic. Right. Um, and I like how like there's narration, but it's used in a odd way. Cause like, the narrator says sometimes exactly what uh, Julie says. And it's just like a little weird thing that I sort of liked. Like something you, you never really seen. Like, And Julie says that she feels lonely. And then Julie says, I feel lonely. I just like that. It's a cool it's little quirk. It's kind of like um, a comedy yeah. sort of thing. Well, I think the movie's built as like, built, build as a comedic film but it's it's almost maybe like, like w what's this norway N yeah norway comedy norwegian norwegian comedy yep <laughs> <laughs> um norway ivan let's get into norway hmm. never really thought about norway until this movie i still don't it's a rich nation um yeah that's it <laughs> no the <clears throat> the director said this is uh the third film in his uh oslo trilogy 
Oslo being the the city, the capital of Norway. Um, and in this film, he was stating that he was uh, talking. The themes were revolving around like how uh, the indecisiveness of people, uh, like Julie, right? Okay. How she doesn't know what she wants in her career, in her life, in her partner. Um, and I, honestly, I could relate to that. The career thing that she was going through. But she was like 30 and still indecisive. No, she was mid-20s. She was like 30. Nope. When they got married, she was like 30. Not married. Married. When they moved in, she was like 30. No. She she was like 26, 27. Anyways, sure. Late 20s. Okay. I do... I loved how they sort of talked about that, like, and it's it was presented cool where she's like, she went to med school and she realized she only went to med school because she wanted the best grades and that was a way to signify you have the best grades. And then when she realized that, she went to do what like um, psychiatry. Psychiatry, and then she looked at the future psychiatrists of the world and realized they're as crazy as her, <laughs> which was a, it's an interesting thing to know, you know, how like. We're all kind of crazy, and the future of the world is in the hands of all these crazy people. I like that idea. And then as she leaves that field, she goes and becomes a photographer, and she experiences like a whole different life in the same city. Mm -hmm. And I like that idea of like, we think of San Diego as a certain way, right? Mm -hmm. But if we're in a different field, like policemen will see san diego as like a filthy city you know right and i love that exploration that they did with this film but the undecisive indecisiveness of julie that really sort of like i understood that and the director was saying that as uh as norwegians they sort of feel like an obligation um to live up to the standards that their nation is giving them because it's relatively wealthy country, you know, and mm-hmm. it's like predominantly white. So this the sort of uh feeling that Julie has of like feeling less than mm-hmm. because she doesn't know what she wants is because she knows she's from pr- uh privilege. Not only is she white, but she's in this like great city where she can do basically anything. Mm-hmm. And she's going through careers like candy um what do you have you ever had that feeling of like I'm, i know you did but not me <laughs> of what am i gonna do what's my career um maybe like a few years back two years back it was like the last but were there a lot of stop and starts of like, I'm going to be a mailman. No, <laughs> I'm going to be a plumber. No, I'm going to be an engineer. Mm, not really. It's just like I waited until I figured it out, but I didn't really. State. Yeah. State what you're going to be. Like I tried different things, but. Mm. I And you know me, like I've always been the guy that's like. I want to do this now. I'm doing this now. I'm going to be an astronaut. But like now, I feel like I would be interested interested in doing like almost anything. Uh-huh. As long as it's like there's some creative aspect to it. Right. Like I wouldn't want to be a doctor because all you're doing is like reading and then like, oh, you're you're sick. Take this medicine. Right. I think Julie describes it as being like a plumber yeah. or a carpenter. She's like, you just see something like, oh, okay, time to fix yeah. it. It's, there's no like, unless you're trying to be like cutting edge tech or whatever. If we cut off your arm, your leg's going to work. <laughs> but that's like not even interesting because I don't want to risk people's lives just to right. someone else's gig. Yeah. When I, it, it made me also think about so I'm a software engineer, basically a, a web web developer, right? Web uh, dev. It's a it's a fancy name for I make websites. Web dev. I'm a web dev. Web dev. Put some weird glasses. Web dev. And when I think back about 
how I became a web dev. It's so stupid. Okay. Cause I started uh, my career, I started my um, my schooling in web development because I wanted to make a website to sell things. Like I wanted, I paid for a degree so I can make <laughs> so I can make a website to sell things. Yeah. Like I didn't know what I want to sell, but I was like, I think this is the future to sell things. Sell things. Sell things online. Okay. Which it technically is like Amazon service. You called it. <laughs> I called it a long time ago, guys. Selling Anyways, things. and and then throughout that process of going to school and then like after finishing school, I sort of lost why I even started it. And I'm like, I got excited to get a job in web development. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until like a year in that I was like, Hold the phone. Wait a second. Where's the plot? Why? How? Why am I working here? <laughs> Just out loud. <laughs> why am I here, guys? But it's so weird that that's how it worked in my brain. And I think it works like that for many people where like... You forgot the... You start the something for a reason. Five years later, you're in this job and you're like, I kind of don't like this job. Wait, why am I doing this job? Oh yeah, I remember why. Because I wanted to build a damn website to sell video games. You know? Yeah. Who's calling? That's oh, someone else. Sorry. Sorry, Jason, I'm podcasting. Whoa. And I'm sure... Hundreds of millions of people feel this. For me, like, I have the same mentality in a way. Uh huh. But I'm more like building the skill. Yeah. And then that's when I'll be like, okay, what do I want to do with this? I'm not like, I am kind of like, I want to build a website to sell things, but it's not like the goal. Like, I want to have just the ability to do that, but that's not the goal to sell you know but then th you become like the the master of uh master of none thing right jack of all trades jack of all trades oh good good switch on me that's that's part of it jack of all trades <laughs> but master, master of none. none sounds worse than jack of all trades but it got the, there's the whole quote is jack of all trades master of none but often better than some a master of one ah so is that what you want to be? Kind of, yeah. It what is it? there's another name for it. Um an idiot. <laughs> 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 no, there's <laughs> uh like a like polymath? Yes. Polymath, that's the word. <laughs> I just thought Jesus I thought of Christ. polymath, but then I thought of idiot and I was like, "Oh, I got to say it." <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a freaking <laughs> idiot. Yeah, polymath is something that really intrigues me. Like being able to do everything, right? I mean, I don't want to do everything. I just want to focus on like a few core good skills and then like combine them in some way. Yeah. Because I don't want to be like basically basic good at piano, basic good at drawing, basic good at writing. I want to be like super good at drawing, super good at doing graphs, right. super good at this. Right. And then that's it. Like, I don't want to have 10 different things I'm good yeah. at. Just three. I'm pretty good at, not one I'm super good at. Yes. There is another theme of the relationships that Julie's in. Sort of being in a relationship because it's the thing to do versus the right relationship. And I've known people exactly like this. Where they're there I'd say it's like a majority of people. Yes. Next question. <laughs> the idea of like this works, so I guess this is the relationship that I'm going to be in. And then cut to two years later. Fat, old, ugly. <laughs> you're fat, you're wrinkly, and you have this blank stare while you watch Seinfeld. Hey, come on. And your husband's upstairs playing Call of Duty, yelling at his friends while you're feeding your baby from your teat. Titillating. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, oh. not titillating. <laughs> you know, it's like 
we're exaggerating obviously but there's mm-hmm. those those feelings that of like what why am i here but i guess i got to be here and then yeah. sometimes you're in it and the other person thinks everything's all good but you're like well, i guess deep down i'm not happy i think it's people don't treat relationships as like seriously as they should mhm like they're just with someone like well i'm pretty happy now they don't really see too far into the future. Right. Like, let's say there's a girl I'm with, and then she's like, well, I never, ever, ever want to have kids, ever. Yeah. I'm like, well, well when that happens, we'll, we'll cross that bridge in a yep. couple of years. And then five years later, like, nothing changes. That's already, like, I could have solved this five years ago by not dating you in the first place. Mm-hmm. That's like a million different things that, that happens to people yeah and then there's like those the other things like what do you like doing i like watching movies i guess that's fine i'll, I'll stick with that like the <laughs> the more subtle or subtler subtler things Subtle-er. that that you don't think are a big deal at the moment and you're unattracted to at the moment but you deal with it because it's like he's I mean, cute <laughs> she's cute for me, I feel like I could get interested in anything. Yes. And the optimal person would also be interested in anything. Like, let's say she's like, oh, I hate movies and I kind of like movies. I'm like, okay. But if she's like, if she has like the mentality where you could be interested in anything. And I think literally everyone could have that. Yeah. They're not dumb. Right. And she could get interested in movies eventually. Yeah. And it doesn't make sense. Like, you don't like movies? There's a million movies. <laughs> you don't like any of them? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Same with, like, books, TV, knitting. Like, I mean, I don't knit, but if she's like, look, this is kind of cool, try it. And like, oh, that was kind of cool. Uh-huh. Maybe I'll start knitting. <laughs> I don't know. You're right, right. It's, possi- it's a possible thing yeah. that could happen. I kind of want to make a beanie, you know? I do. I, w- I want to knit, but as long as the thing I knit is, like, very tightly Jeez. knitted. <laughs> I don't like loose knitting stuff. And I feel like, like... That's, like, next level or something. Like, the first hundred things that I knit would be super loose. Mm-hmm. But I want to get to the point where it's, like, just, like, bulletproof. <laughs> Kevlar? Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I made a bulletproof suit <laughs> out of cotton. <laughs> um, adamantium uh yeah relationships and it's i think the root thing the root problem with the relationships that go like the way they do in this movie with julian stuff is the real issue is that they don't know themselves yeah right because when you don't know yourself you do things to try it out Mm mm-hmm but once you know yourself, you know exactly what you want. Or yeah. at least you know the area of things that you like. Where this girl, she's like, uh, he seems cool. I'll try it. And there's like that scene where in the very beginning when they meet and like he basically breaks up with her like, oh, we shouldn't be together. I'm older. Yeah, it's your fault the whole time. Yeah, I'm, I'm older. You're younger. You're going to resent me because I'm older. It ends up being true, basically. Yeah. And she breaks up with him and basically gives him the same speech in a way. Yep. <sighs> and, I, and I like that, you know, like the whole coming to fruition, coming back in a circle with the whole movie. And I, I like what the director did with that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, the magical realism about this film the I, I like that interspersed with the straight up drama of the film um very unique and uh, or original the idea of like you stop time right she stops time by turning off the light in the room and she goes and spends the whole day with her her would be lover uh-huh. and she comes back she turns on the light but that didn't really obviously she didn't stop time yeah but I think the idea is like when she came back and turned on that light, she the day before she already spent that time with him, you know? Mm-hmm. So, but I like how we sort of 
mixes in magical realism and spruces up with what would be like maybe a dull scene. Very clever. Um, and obviously taking psychedelics, those that mushroom scene, it creeped me out, man. I had a couple experiences with marijuana mm. where like you take it and you sort of do what she does where it's like, I don't know how to describe it other than like a bong going off. Mm. And like, you're just like in another, not another dimension. Like you're still in the real world, but something switches in your head where it's, you become aware of being completely obliterated in your brain, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it's, it's creepy. And I cannot imagine what taking mushrooms is like that. I think will, uh, leave some long-term effects on my brain. Remind me of the Mad Men LSD. Oh. <laughs> and then the music. Da, 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 yeah. Da, da, da. <laughs> oh, great scene. <sighs> Let's watch Mad Men again. I love that that scene too in Mad Men because uh, it didn't try to do anything visually crazy. Right. Right? I think the craziest thing was like the... The, the whoop. Right. Yeah. But everything else was like practical. Yeah. They just used sound effects and stuff like that. I like them. I like that more than like. Right. Like, are you down, baby? Yeah. <laughs> Foxy lady. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Um. Yeah, my my friend was like, if you take mushrooms, you'll be okay. No one's ever died and had a mental, like, mess up on that. I'm like, yeah, but you don't know me, man. You don't know me. So gross when she pulls out her, uh, was it tampon? Tampon yeah. and like throws it, and she smears her face. Like, she yeah, you go, up. girl. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Except the next day, it was all real. Um. Okay, this is part of the film that I was sort of like trying to understand. I I didn't really know what. Let's hear it. The director was trying to go for, but I think there's like this. Um, this idea that he's trying to grapple with, which is like living life versus like working too much. Okay. And I think it's sort of uh, accentuated by like uh, the Axel character, her boyfriend, who's a comic book artist. Mm -hmm. And he ends up getting cancer. Mm -hmm. He's dying. And he, he goes on this rant where he talks to her and he's like, I don't want to live through my work. I don't want to be remembered through my work. Um, I look back and I see that I collected all these comic books and that was, I was reading like all the time trying to learn, but he's like, but I'm going to die now. And now it's like p pointless, you know? Yeah. And he, this character sort of like portrayed as an intellectual, like he reads a lot. He like quotes, um, someone i forgot like uh freud. freud right so and it made me think and on the other side julie's more like uh she doesn't know what she wants to do but she's always like trying new things she's living life you know yeah but i don't know on what side the director's on or maybe he's not on his side but do you do you see that too like where he's trying to talk about like these dual ways of living and what's going to be the best thing to do before you pass away i think just somewhere in the middle like julie was too like she had to figure something out and then do it and then be happy and just live yeah instead of just live and not know and then axel he like was too into his work like learning and books and all that when he should have probably stopped at one point and just like had a little cuddle with his w girlfriend and just enjoyed that instead yep. of being in his work. Yep. So somewhere like in the middle for both of them. Yeah. Cause Julie was also like, well, I wish I was you Axel because mm -hmm. you actually have something to, to show for. I don't really have anything. Mm -hmm. So there is some kind of like compromise there. Um, but yeah, it was very interesting. Like that whole, 
I don't want to live through my comics because he was a comic book artist. But I think it's just that feeling of like, not so much I don't want to live through my comics, but I want to live. Yeah. Like, like I'm jealous that my comic books get to live. <laughs> I want to live. Like legacy doesn't really even matter if I don't even get to see it at all. Yeah. So I might as well just want to live or something. Yeah. Or legacy does it matter to me? Because I, what matters to me is to live. Yeah. What leg legacy matters for everyone else. Yeah, I think legacy. I think everyone would come to the same conclusion he did, at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because when you're when you're dying, it just. I want to live. Yeah, you want to live. I want to be. You obviously don't want to die. Um. Uh, Julie has uh basically cheats right or she cheats she cheats um what is cheating ivan i'll show you <laughs> oh no <laughs> i think it's like it's just a mentality like you could just cheat in your head all right i'm here for this <laughs> <laughs> like like the when they met and then they're like, is this cheating? I think that was cheating. Like, the second you say that, right? I think at the point you got to be like, look, I'm with someone. I have to walk away or else I'm going to actually do something stupid. Yeah. And if you're not, you're just letting it go on and on and you're going to just cheat. Like yeah. actual, actual cheat. Yeah, because there's like, you can kiss someone and that's, some people probably would say kissing isn't cheating, huh? Could be. There's some dummies. Like a little peck. Come on. A little peck. And like you cheated, not a lot, but you cheated. Yeah. Right. It just depends, like on the person. Like everyone has moments of weakness. You know? Oh, <laughs> I haven't talked to me, brother. I'm just. It just depends on like the boundaries, I guess you set mm -hmm. beforehand. Yeah. Because you really could cheat just mentally, easily. Yeah. Like you could just be emotionally vulnerable with someone. And you could say like, oh, I wish this person was cooler in whatever way. And that's like a super vulnerable thing that your partner didn't want you to say. And I could, could consider that cheating in its Interesting. own way. Interesting, right. Yeah, because in this movie, Julie has meets this guy named Evan or Elvin or something like that. And they're at a, a wedding, a wedding party, and they share so many intimate moments of drinking from each other's cup, from like coming, from smelling each other's armpits. Uh, I think the moment when they said uh, what is considered cheating, that's when it's like, all right, stop. Right. Get away. Right. From each other. Right. I just thought like they more than cheated in this <laughs> by just doing things that they probably don't even do with their partner. Right. Like peeing in front of them. <laughs> I'm like, okay, you cheated now. Yeah. Cause you're bas you're cheating, but in a, in a more sinister way too. Yeah. Emotional cheating versus like physical cheating. Yeah. And then like the, the, I like the scene where like, I think he was, she was smoking a cigarette. She blows it out and he like sucks it in. And that's so symbolic of everything, you know, of like, I'm taking you in, taking what you're spitting out. Scandalous. He should have just drank her pee. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> that would have been the ultimate cheat. That would have been a, a titillating piece of cinema. <laughs> Um, there's, uh, the other subject theme, whatever the idea of like the pressures of being in a relationship Okay. that you sort of had to show up, you know? Right. Like there's the good things about relationships and like being affectionate and all that, but there's also like just the idea of you have to clock in sometimes. And put in that nine to five <laughs> and ask your partner certain questions for them to feel like you care. Which I think is probably Julie's 
hindrance where like she doesn't care sometimes enough and that just stems back like maybe you're with the wrong guy um and then also her not wanting children right and the pressures from the outside world saying like you're in a relationship so now the next step is you're gonna have children and it is weird right and you don't know that pressure until you're in it i know that pressure oh no who's asking you to pop one out god oh nice good old jesus you're gonna say something um it kind of the pressure i think a lot of the, there was like another topic you talked about earlier but it was involving oh like what you should be doing next with like the career and you should be doing this if you have like this much privilege and all that mm-hmm. <clears throat> and just like all that social pressure of telling you you have to get that good career get that marriage get that kid like you have to do all yep these it's just it's weird how it's like something you would tell people to do like i feel like it's like that shouldn't be not that this shouldn't be talked about but you shouldn't ask people like what they plan on doing because like best case scenario you're gonna ask them and they're like oh I'm doing this and then they're doing that. Yeah. But you're never going to convince someone like, you know what? I'm going to have a kid now with what you said. Yeah. After the 30th person who told me to have a kid, you're the, you're the one that convinced me, you know, same with like career and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Like maybe there is someone that can give, convince you, mm-hmm. but it won't be from straight up saying you should have a kid because they, they're awesome. You know, it gives you life. Like the the real way to convince someone is like, but why don't you want to have a kid? And then go down that deep, dark rabbit hole. But nobody wants to talk about that. No, no, no. No, no one wants that. Uh, so watching this film sort of makes me want to look, <laughs> makes me want to watch more foreign films. Not me. And then there was like trailers before this film that were all foreign and they look good, you know? I think it's definitely a missing aspect of my my game. And they're 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 saying this movie's like one of the best films of the year. I think it's nominated. I think we read it off in the Oscars last week when we were I mean I don't know. It was good, but I didn't I wasn't like wow, that that was something. Well, to be honest, her acting was was super good. Like yeah. her acting was cuz and I really noticed it when in the final scene where uh she's taking the photogra- the photograph of her ex's wife or partner or whatever. Mm-hmm. And she's kind of like a bad actor. Mm-hmm. And then you just realize the whole film how believable she was. Yeah. It's like damn and I know it's not like your cup of tea, this film, but it's a really good film. Yeah. It just, I, I, I mean, I would say it's better than. Watch it. You know, like, um, what's that film? Goodfellas or something? Or like Kill Bill. Yeah, that's more hurting yourself than me. <laughs> <Damn it. laughs> it's better than. Other guys? Other guys. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Why I oughta rewatchability, Ivan? Low, medium, or high? Probably low. I go medium. Um, I like to remember how it was. Not really gonna rewatch this until like ten years from now. Show it to my kid. This is how not to be when you grow up. <laughs> Best scenes, Ivan. Uh, what was one of your favorite scenes? Want to go first? I like when they cheated in the party. Yeah. That was just cool to watch. Good anticipation too, like yeah. anticipation build up. And will they cheat? Won't they? They did cheat the entire time. I like the mushroom scene. I already mentioned that. 
I put the same same scene when they were cheating at the wedding and uh, the wedding party. I like the scene in the beginning when she's uh, taking multiple college classes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like the last scene where she takes a photo of her ex's partner. Mm-hmm. And then she goes back to her her room and she's editing her photo. What does that symbolize, Ivan? Life's a funny thing. And also, like, I'm going to make you perfect for him. Oh. Right? Oh. 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 Ivan, <laughs> out of five tickets, how many tickets would you give this film? Um, I give it the hearty four. Four tickets for me as well. Whatever. Good film. Great acting. Yeah. Unique story. Thank you, y'all, Kim. Ivan, it's time for a section we like to call Things and Such. Watch the Super Bowl halftime show. <laughs> Sadly. I did not. What's your recap from it? Um, nothing wrong with the music, but it just needed some pizzazz. It just felt, uh, I mean, I'm kind of tainted with my seething hates of football, but I like, like I look at, not that I'm like the biggest fan of these people, but the Michael Jackson performance and the Prince performance, I feel like those are that should be like the aim for everything. Oh, I haven't seen those at the Super Bowl. Yeah. Damn. They weren't together. They're right. separate. But both of them, it's like if I was there, I would probably cry. And I'm not even like a fan of that. Damn. <coughs> I am a fan of like Michael, D- but that's not the point. You know what's a great? You just made me think about Prince. Classic song. I will die for you. I would die for you. Prince, his lyrics are, I'm not your lover. I'm not your friend. I am something that you cannot comprehend. Okay. So good. What are, Those are bars, bro. I'm rapper. not your lover. I'm not your friend. I am something that you cannot comprehend. Like, damn. I'm so, I'm so much of a person. You can't even comprehend me. Like, that's how much I'm into you. Bars. Uh, what did you think about Kendrick's piece? Good. Yeah. They're all good. It just needs more showmanship. Like, and it should have been at night or something, darker than Flash. Like, Kendrick, he did that one performance that was, like, super critically acclaimed. At like on um, the Grammys or something. Were you gonna be alright? Something. No, I mean like in the past. Oh, he rehashed the same performance? No, no. I'm saying he's done something where it's like gotcha. wow. That gotcha, was gotcha. Something. And then this I don't think it's his fault. But it's just not as good as that. Like I'm I'm just saying if there's like already a good baseline and then you're below that, you didn't do that good. Yeah, I agree. Do you think um, with this performance by or with this with Kendrick being part of this performance, do you think this will uh, signal new music soon? Given that his like uh, his name is now out there more than it's been in the past year. I think new music was coming no matter what. But do you think it's imminent now? Yes. I was hoping like he would do something very, very good. That way it's like, you know, music's coming next yeah. week, you know? But since he just, it, since nothing was like reported that it was like amazing. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, okay, we still have some time. Yep. Um, the most interesting thing this past week has been Ye's descent into madness and wokeness and then madness again and then wokeness and then madness i don't know 
he's off the leash and careful with your words he is just going ham on that instagram Ooh, cute it's just very bad i think ultimately in all regards yeah um, it's bad for him it's bad for his kids most importantly whatever. it's bad for his him wanting to get back with kim yeah it's bad for pete davidson because it's putting him in harm look it's bad for kid look. cuddy the cutster look okay Def- adrian <laughs> defend your man i, I man oh wow obviously pete okay i can write like 20 essays on this <laughs> <laughs> imagine a book that you make just filled up essays <laughs> that kanye gave you to that he inspired you with jesus one day why pete is wrong that would be one of the, the next page why pete is right <laughs> that would be one too it just like there's so much wrong in every way and like every part of that like I don't think, like, Kim and Kanye probably should have never dated in the first place. Correct. But who am I to say, like, that, too? Like, that's a whole different beast. Right. That's three essays right there. <laughs> like, oops, three essays, <laughs> there they go. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever, they're, they had their stuff. They had their stuff, yep. Pete, he should have been smart enough to stay away from any of that. I know he kind of, I bet he loves this in his own twisted way. And he he's also hates it too, I'm sure. But he, I don't know, like he knew Kanye beforehand. He really should not have dated Kim. Not saying he shouldn't, but logically, if I were him, I would have been like, you know what? Your ex is a little something. <laughs> you can't even say it. <laughs> So there's that. That's two and a half essays. Um, Kanye. <laughs> I don't know. I I don't see a good ending for him in any way. I think because it, it just feels like it's getting worse and worse. But I think he just wants somebody to like, not like a yes man, but somebody to be like, like, I understand what you mean, but not in like a yes man way. Because I'm sure, like, he has a bunch of people like, you right, you right, yay, you right, yay, you right, yay. <laughs> Get him, yay. Yeah. And that's not helping him. You got to be, like, a middleman, not a yes man. <laughs> yeah. And be like, you know, you have a point, but you have to do it this way. Or you have to be more kind or whatever. I don't think he has anyone like that. Maybe Kim, but, I mean, she had Kim. Yeah. <clears throat> and I, I don't even trust her because she, like, dated Kanye, like, you got to be kind of crazy for that. Yeah. Mm. And then, I don't know. Kanye just shouldn't be he, doing this either. I he just has points. Like the media narrative and all those stuff he's saying. Yeah, there's a point in that. But like when you're, when you're outing your, your ex on social media, it's a bad look. It was funny when he's like, when she's like, can you stop? <laughs> so yeah. people are like, but I love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, there is hilarious parts about it. Yeah. Uh, there was the one that made me laugh is like, he went on this rant and then at the very end, he's like, no one has ever listened to a Machine Gun Kelly song. <laughs> like... Like nothing was about Machine Gun Kelly, and then yeah. like the last statement is like, and by the way, <laughs> no one likes Machine Gun Kelly, and I'm like, yes, he's totally yeah. right about yeah. that specific yeah. fact. Yeah. No, it, I think the exact quote was like, no one's, no one in high school has ever listened to Machine Gun Kelly. Yeah. Thank you, Kanye, for that. And I know Machine Gun Kelly's like. His little, his ego just went down like so many levels. And that's what I'm here for. But you cannot lambast your ex while saying like, I just want to be with my kids. 
And then you're with your kids at the Super Bowl and you're talking shit to your ex, you know? Yeah. It's like, how about you just be with your kid? Like, isn't that what you really want? But he's so caught up in this like cycle of like Instagram that it's it's very bad. Yep. And to be like publicly outing Pete, like no one no one likes you, skeet. <laughs> he commits to it too. Like he's never once called him Pete. Maybe like the start put. And then when he uncovers Pete or SNL skits about him being crazy. Mm-hmm. He's like, that's messed up, man. You're making fun of my mental ill, like being mentally ill. Like he's picking and choosing what's right and what's wrong. But he's right. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. That he probably shouldn't be made fun of for being, I, having yeah. a, ment- a mental issue. I'm not saying it's, you don't make jokes about mental illness, mm-hmm. but I think if your mental uh, if your mental illness is exasperated by social media and what people say online and all that stuff you got to be kind of respectful like like a Kanye joke's like a Donald Trump joke it's so simply easy to just say it and like make people laugh cuz it's so easy to laugh at like the crazy person yeah that's there's no there's no talent in that yeah like i don't know how you would make i don't know what a good kanye joke would be i could maybe think of one after an hour or whatever it would be yeah it would be more nuanced than saying like get back on your meds or take meds you know yeah that's like what everyone's saying now and there's no there's nothing in that it's just it's like okay right and who are you to be like, get on your meds? Yeah. And okay, but yeah, it's a joke. But there's a bunch of people that are seeing it that they're not seeing it as a joke. They're just saying like, you should get back on your meds because you're acting crazy. Or maybe I'm crazy because of the situation I'm in, not because I'm off my meds. And Kanye's like in that perfect loop of like, he won't take the meds because of his mental and he doesn't. He won't take the meds because of the mental illness he has that makes him think he shouldn't take meds. Right. So, like, in a way, you're making fun of that mental illness yeah. still. Because, like, the mental illness is that he can't take meds. Right. It's like a weird sort of twist. You're in a loop. Yeah. But if you make fun of that, I don't think that's right. Yeah. I mean, you can make fun of it. Just be smart about it. Yeah. Don't be so basic. Take your meds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, Kanye. Well, his album's coming out next week. Hopefully. And Netflix dropped his first episode, right? Did you watch it? Yeah. I haven't watched it, so we'll talk about it next week. Okay. Um, uh, it's time for a section we call What's on the Telly? <laughs> watch anything? <laughs> Still watching Arrested Development. Oh, God. It's been slow. But you're not watching too much stuff, right? Nah. Uh, I think I'm just going to rewatch things for a while and just focus on like school or work. It's good. It's good, bro. Stay folk. <laughs> um, I watched the latest episode of Euphoria. Good episode. Um, I watched Kimmy. Have you heard of that? It's on HBO Max. Uh, it stars uh, Bat. Oh, Catwoman. Zoe Kravitz. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and it's directed by Steven Soderbergh. Ring a bell. <laughs> Ring a bell. I know the name, but I don't know what he's directed. Magic Mike, Ocean's Eleven Trilogy. Nice. And like a bunch of other films. Okay. He's he's very prolific. And like his... I looked at his filmography and it's just like uh, critically acclaimed. And then like some duds, but... He's making like a film every year. Right. So he's very, he's trying to be prolific. But he has a, like, a nice career as a, a director. Like, he's slept on, is what I'm saying. And this film was, uh, and his films as of late, I've seen like the past three or four films, and they're kind of basic. They're, they're short and they're, they're all different. So like he's, 
he's doing like branching a different what branching branching out but at least he's like trying something different every time right and this movie was good it wasn't like amazing but it's it's a thriller and it's mm-hmm. an hour and 30 minutes it's super quick it's it's great like for what it is it's great and uh yeah it's just cool to see like someone who isn't like uh so precious about their work right you know like you'll you'll get like a a nolan who's like this movie costs 250 million dollars to make and i'm not gonna make it for any less this guy he makes his phone he makes i think one of the movies i watched that was released on netflix like two years ago he made it on iphones (laughs) you know yeah so it's like this guy's just trying to make movies in different ways i think not that i'm like some creative whatever but sometimes i like I have I work on throwing ideas out, like I think of stuff, and then a lot of times I try to write it down, but like often I'm just like, you know what, I'll just forget it. Oh, okay. No. Uh-huh. You know? Just because I feel like either I'll remember again another time, or I'll like improve in some way. But I don't want to. I don't want to be like I have this perfect idea and i feel like if i keep throwing things away i'll more easily be able to say you know what i'm okay with one million for this movie that i'm making right five million yeah i i used to write down like all the ideas i had and like i looked up at it um because i think it's like on google drive or something and i looked at it the other day and i'm like oh this shit (laughs) (laughs) oh god this shit (laughs) I only write them down now if it's like, wow, that's, I right. can do this, like, now. Yeah. But if it's like, <laughs> sell things on the website. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you know oh, what? I'll let that one <laughs> fly. <laughs> Maybe I should keep that in the, the trash bin. <laughs> so, yeah, that's all I've been watching. Nothing too crazy. Uh, Ivan, it's time for a section we'd like to call, Really Be Bussin'. <laughs> Five yo. So sir, five e. Movie. I don't remember the rest. <laughs> Came out with a song called New York. No, Empire? I think it's a City of Gods. City of God. It's good. I thought it was bad. <laughs> really? Yeah. Why? Cause it? Cause of Alicia? Part of it. I don't think Kanye did too well either. No. So, but I think it sounds big. You know, it sounds important. Okay, right? but Alicia already has like the biggest New York City song ever. True. Why on God's green earth? Why would she try to retread? Yeah. Like you have that was like. Well, she's not trying to retread. I mean, he's trying to retread. Five years trying to capture. But that if magic. I were her, I've been like, you know what? I have New York, and then I would have sang the whole song to him at that point, <laughs> <laughs> and then. <laughs> And he's like, no, I get it. New York! <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll get 5e to do Jay-Z verse. Yeah. But, and then I think just like that, the woman singing as like the chorus is kind of just, like I've heard it so many times. Yeah, it's very like classic hip hop song. Yeah. In 2022. 2022. Yeah. That was like, Eminem did that in like 2000, negative <laughs> five. <laughs> yeah it's a good point um it's bad because it's been done not exactly because it's bad bad yeah five year was the best thing about it yeah yep and to the kanye point he's like his lyrics aren't that bad but his delivery is just so like flaccid yeah he's not like not punching like he used to no he's like rocky balboa but like that the last movie yes old (laughs) like i'll never forget it always comes in my mind his verse on um uh what's the two two chain song birthday yeah birthday when he says ah what i don't know 
naked in the Merseys. Isn't that okay? Whatever. Yeah, it's that song. Okay. Birthday. I tell a kid in the Merseys, and how he delivers that was like, oh. I think now because he's so like unwell, he's not really. He just wants to say what he's thinking now, but he isn't really trying to punch it through. Yeah, he's like being a human diary poop machine. Yeah. Instead, he should be more artistic and selective. <sighs> no one's winning from this Kanye thing, right? We'll see when the album comes out. <laughs> well, I I saw like one line reviews about uh, the documentary, and they're like, "We missed old Kanye." He, I think, it's he's still there. Just his mental illness is not is hurting him. It's like exaggerating exaggerating who he is like his flaws and everything mm-hmm. but like i watched that i was like that's kanye like it's still this like it's one. still him yeah and just now he's ultra not, famous and he's not well he's a sick sick man <laughs> <clears throat> yep and that, that's another thing like i don't like when people say i want the old kanye even though kanye made a song about that yeah but it's like that's part of the mental illness thing. Like he can't help it. Yeah. It's the loop and all that. Oh, Kanye. Anyways, five year, keep doing your thing. Uh, more of this, but with less of Alicia and less Kanye, <laughs> but g- keep thinking big. Yeah. Uh, you know what song I really like? I like snot song. You know Snot, right? Yeah, but wasn't he featured? Was it like a feature? No, it's with ASAP Rocky. Yeah, I didn't. I don't remember it, but I know it sounds so good. Does it? It's so good. Like how he how he raps, how he delivers his rap. The beat is awesome. Uh, I listened to his album. It's okay. I mean, <laughs> it's, uh, he's part of uh, ASAP, I guess now, or like that imprint, whatever. Is that even? But I feel like he's kind of. Uh, machine made aren't they all lately but i'm not i just don't know enough about him but i just have to say i love his new song with asap rocky <sighs> like his whole shtick is having his hoodie closed you know <laughs> you seen that <laughs> what a crazy <laughs> shtick he has all right shout out to snot that sounds weird uh, did you hear Vince Staples' new song? Uh, no, but I heard he has an album. On the way? Yeah. It's really good, the song. He's like one of the rappers I trust. I trust him, Kendrick, and ASAP Rocky. Produced by DJ Mustard. DJ Mustard. And it's... <laughs> why'd you say it like a radio host? DJ Mustard. <laughs> DJ Mustard. <laughs> duh, 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 duh. DJ. Welcome to 98.9 with the FM. FM. <laughs> <laughs> you are now, 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 now in the mix. It, 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 it. Mixing it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that was horrible. Uh, it's a classic DJ Mustard produced song, but Vince. Was it on the beat? He like distills what every rapper should do on a DJ Mustard beat perfectly. He's a smart guy. So I'm interested to see where he goes. Uh, uh, maybe this album is more pop orientated because this is obviously like a, a hit, quote unquote. I don't know if it will be a hit, but it's a hit song for me. He can do it. He could do it. But it's a little late in the game for him. You know, like he's like already halfway into his career. He's been, he's built this audience of being more of like introspective gangsters. So... We'll see where he goes. I'm excited. Uh, I think that's it. Any music for you? Um, not really. Not really, right? No. Uh, cool. Anything else you want to talk about, bro? Mm. Anything you seen out in the wild? Nah. Nah. All right. Well, you're going to slap me? Yeah. Why? When it's over. Oh. 
Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching uh, uh, Belicos with the Burrows. We'll be back next week with a new episode. Uh, most likely the... I don't know. I don't want to say it because there's three parts and there's only one part out, right? I say we watch a movie. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll talk about a new movie next week. So tune in for that. Again, leave a review. Leave a comment. Like the video. Subscribe to our podcast. Wherever you get podcasts, we'll be there. We'll see you next week. Peace out. Bye.